Alright, so now that my project is open, the first thing I'm going to do is down here in the project window, I'm going to create a new folder inside of the assets folder called sprites. So I'll right click, I'm going to choose create folder, and I'm going to name it sprites. It's just good practice to create folders named after the category of asset that's going to be in them. And uh, it seems like overkill at the beginning, but as projects get larger, you'll see that this is uh, very useful for our sanity. So inside of the sprites folder, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to the create menu, find the sprites category, and choose square. So this menu is just useful for getting super simple um, basic sprites uh, to use for prototyping or gray boxing in your 2D games. So I'm going to just grab this square and drag it into my scene. And then with the rectangle tool, I can uh, resize the sprite so that it kind of creates a makeshift floor and uh, this white rectangle here shows the uh, the limits of what the camera can see so I'm going to make sure my floor covers up the whole area that the camera can see and I'm going to click and drag the floor down uh, so that's near the bottom of the camera's view then before I forget I'll go over to the hierarchy and uh, rename this game object, I don't want to just leave it named square. I want to make sure I can remember what this is for and what it is, so I'll name it floor. Alright, so um, the next thing I'm going to need to do is add a collider to the floor so that my character won't just fall through it. So I'm going to make sure the floor is selected in the scene and then choose add component over here in the inspector and search for the box collider 2D. So that's just in physics 2D, box collider 2D. And when you're dealing with 2D, you have to make sure that anytime you have a choice between a 2D or a 3D anything, just make sure you choose the 2D version. All right, so by default, um, when you add a box collider to a sprite, it will try to map the collider to the edges of the sprite which works really well for our rectangle here uh, you you might have a difficult time seeing it but there's a faint green outline uh, around the perimeter of the sprite and that just indicates that now it has a uh, collider so if I were to toggle this off you'll see there's no collider now there is a collider and I'm just going to toggle back on the sprite renderer so we can actually see this floor again the sprite renderer is just what causes our, sh our sprite to show up on the camera. Uh, so now our floor has a collider so things can rest on it. Uh, the next step will be to add another square to our scene that can serve as our uh, placeholder player character. So I'm just going to drag this square into the scene. I'm going to rename it player character. and uh, maybe I had better give it a different color so it stands out from my floor. Um, so actually I'm going to change the color of the floor first. Uh, so I select the floor game object here and then in the sprite renderer component choose the color option and it should bring up a color picker window and uh, I'll just choose something that has a little bit more contrast, um, maybe like a blue or a gray. <clears throat> All right, and then I can just leave my character white, and it's easy to tell them apart now. Um, so I had better add collision to my player character also. So let's select the player character here and choose Add Component. And again, we'll just use a Box Collider 2D for the time being because that fits 
the physical shape of our character pretty accurately, for now at least. And if I were to run the game now, the next issue we'll see, this is intended to be a side scroller, and you'll see that the, um, the character uh, doesn't fall. Actually, I can also see the default blue background of the camera doesn't really stand out from my floor very well, so I'm going to change the color of my floor also. All right, so two things. First, let's make sure the floor is large enough to cover the whole length of the camera view. Then let's change it to a, a color that actually stands out from the default camera background. And then we'll need to add gravity to our player. Now we could just we could custom program gravity to get something very fine-tuned and very specific like you'd see in a Mario game or what have you. Or we could use the built-in physics system in Unity. Um, in this demonstration, I want to use the built-in physics system. So that means that I'm going to need to use uh, a rigid body 2D component on my game object. Uh, so make sure you have your player character selected. And then in the inspector, we want to add another component. It'll be under Physics 2D. And we're looking for Rigid Body 2D. Now, Rigid Body is our keyword for anything that's going to be under the physics, the built in Unity physics simulation. Uh, so now that I've added a Rigid Body with just the default settings, and we have this box collider for our, our player, if I were to run the game now, uh, the player should fall with gravity. And since both the player and the floor have collision, um, they, the player falls and lands on the floor. So that's a good first step. The problem is the player can't move. So that's what we'll be looking to add next.